So today I've made it all the way up to the central highlands of Scotland um, and I'm going to walk up a mountain today and the mountain's called Shehalyan. If you were to look at it, Shehalyan isn't actually much of a mountain but historically it says a lot about not only climbing and mountaineering but of humanity. Its story begins in 1774, sort of in the middle of the Enlightenment movement, where scientists were trying to uncloak the mysteries and myths surrounding various things. One guy in particular stood out, Sir Isaac Newton. Newton had uh, written his Principia Mathematica, and within it, he'd written about this mountain experiment in where he thought he could weigh the earth. What he said was Nay, whole mountains will not be sufficient to produce any sensible effect. A mountain of hemispherical figure, three miles high and six broad, will not, by its attraction, draw the pendulum two minutes out of the true perpendicular and it is only the great bodies of the planets that these forces are to be perceived. In saying that, Newton almost dismissed his theoretical experiment. However, there were scientists around who wanted to prove him wrong and right at the same time. So, the way their experiment was going to work was you have a mountain, and it's a very crude diagram this, and then you put a pendulum on one side, you can put a pendulum on the other side, and the pendulum is affected by two bits of gravity. One, the earth is pulling it down, the other is the centre of gravity of the mountain is pulling this inwards. So if I put a pendulum not near a mountain, it would be, it would hang perpendicular to the Earth's surface. But here, it'd be pulled ever so slightly in towards the mountain, or that's the theory they were relying on. Um, and to a certain extent, that's exactly what they proved with the Shehalyan experiment. Modern scientists have carried it out again using much more accurate telescopes and a computer that mapped all the mountains in the surrounding sort of 100 miles and took into account all the gravitational effects. And what the, these modern scientists found was that this experiment with just three pieces of equipment was almost as good as what they can do today. They kind of had an idea of roughly what the mass of the Earth was because they had a reasonable approximation of the mass of the mountain Shehalyan. To be totally accurate though, what they needed to do was find the mountain's volume and then simply by getting a piece of rock and working out its density, they could then work out the mass of the mountain. This was easier said than done. It took another couple of years for the surveyor to, to map the mountain. What these guys did is they took a load of spot heights, which they measured with a theodolite, and they joined them all together. And what they ended up with was a series of triangles. And 
the problem was was this didn't give them uh, a very easy way to to find the volume so what they did is they went well that's the same height as that as the same height as that as that as that as that as that as that and then they join these points together and what they ended up with was a contour line and then they went outside that one and they did another contour line from all the points of equal height And what they ended up with, in essence, because of the shape of Shehalion, was a series of truncated cones. And fortunately for them, somebody had worked out the math how to work out the volume of a truncated cone, and that's how they found the volume of Shehalion. Utterly incredible. And that was Shehalian's story. One of how scientists first used mountains to try and answer some questions to do with the natural sciences. And in the case of Shehalian, actually weigh the planet that we live on. It's incredible to think that they managed that back in 1774 with the most rudimentary of scientific equipment.